To read more of my reviews, check out anaphilereviews.com or follow me on Twitter at MasterCoX or at Anaphile. Today's review, Glass Lip. Friendship groups are wonderful things. A small circle of pals in your town, or in this case, seaside village, whom you can hang out with and have fun with. But things can easily turn sour. Relationships of that ilk are always hanging by a thread, and can easily break, especially if there are an equal amount of girls and guys in the group. Most of these circles are mature and sensible enough to not allow this to happen. But in Glasslip, it all descends into immature angst and bickering for some really, really bizarre reasons. Glassip is set in a small coastal haven in Japan where a group of five teenagers hang out together in a local cafe. There, Toko, Yanagi, Yuki, Sachi and Hiro share each other's stories and have a nice relaxing time outside of school. They maintain this by imposing a strict no dating rule. A really strict rule. If two members choose to date, they have to leave the group. Like love is toxic or something. Kind of strange and antisocial, don't you think? Especially when there's only five people in the group already. It'd only just be three. That'd be awkward. One day, though, a boy named Kakeru, whom the group calls David as a reference to Michelangelo's David, for some reason, shows up and takes an immediate interest in Toko. The gang react oddly to his interest, like he's some kind of serial killer. Anyway, the rest of the story focuses on, or at least tries to focus on, Kakeru's abilities as these snippets of the future, which brought him to Toko, who can also see the future while she's working at her parents' glass factory. Kakeru is drawn to her because of this, and helps her unlock these visions to their full potential. What are these visions? Well, that's where Glass Slip's premise begins to shatter. The whole gimmick of Kakeru and Toko seeing the future is so mishandled that it may as well not be in the story. Whatever story is there to begin with. The idea of being able to see the future in little fragments, as Kakeru describes them, leaves the door open for some supernatural dealings to occur, or even earth-moving events that can be prevented. How does Toko use this newly found power? To stop Yanagi crying one time. That's it. Oh, 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 there's that one time that she finds out that one of her best friends has to be hospitalized and she barely reacts to it. We just cut to the next scene like that revelation never happened. What? Those are the most taxing things her clairvoyance has to tackle, which is stimulated whenever she's making glass paraphernalia. You'd think it'd be the backbone of the story, but it's not. Instead, we are carried by endless amounts of teenage angst and melodrama, which could easily be avoided. Not that you'd be able to tell because the plot is an absolute mess. Seriously, there is no point to anything. The characters are so one-dimensional that you may as well pretend that they're cardboard puppets. I'm not emotionally invested in them at all, because I don't know them. I don't know their backstory or their motivations outside of their romantic pursuits. We're just thrust into the situation at hand. They are friends who live in the same town. Enjoy! Then there's Kakiru. He is a bit of an enigma, but he brings nothing to the table. All he seems to do is tear the friends apart just by existing. The motivation behind the group's animosity towards him when they first meet Kakeru is so vague that I get the feeling that they hate because reasons, or because the plot says so. I'm trying to think of a reason for that initial animosity, but I'm just drawing blanks. It ultimately makes those friends look like total jerks if they're so closed-minded. I can't think of a recent anime which has got its plot so disastrously wrong. By wrong, I mean having no sense of direction. I'm aware that shows like Azumanga Daioh or Hiramari Sketch or Minami K, which are also slice of life shows, are almost as bereft with plot progression, but those shows make it clear what they are, so the audience isn't left scratching their heads and getting frustrated. Another anime people like and glass lip to is Nagi no Asakura, in terms of the setting and basic idea of friends hanging out during an emotional upheaval. The former fails to emulate the latter's prowess. Glass lip infuriates with how slow it is and can confused as to what it wants to be, and therefore is a jumble of supernatural flickers which are dampened by valueless romantic endeavours that are so strained and drawn out that they bring nothing to the table, other than to pad the plot and bring drama, in huge inverted commas, they failed spectacularly. I guess that's why I stuck with the show as long as I did. Episode 7. I hung in there to see if anything would happen, and because I was in awe of the spectacular train wreck that lay before me. Something kind of happened in episode 6 when things get a little violent, but it's died out quickly. That's when you know something's up when you get excited over a plot point which is slightly different from what you'd seen for the past 20 minutes per episode. Even the romantic confessions are botched. They feel so clinical and lacking of any true feeling that they sound ridiculous. Honestly, such a bad story. Its only saving grace is the artwork. PA Works, which helmed the animation for this and Naki no Asakura actually, pulled out all the stops here and gave a terrible plot some wonderful and majestic backdrops. There were times when I found it hard to distinguish some scenes from real life. They were that skillfully presented that I was left in 
awe. The forests, the sparkling blue ocean in the distance, the authentic townhouses and apartments strewn around the town. Everything felt genuine and lovingly replicated in 2D. I could briefly tune out of the story and revel in the seaside setting and breathe in the coastal air as if I was there. I felt so immersed. Then I got brought back to reality with a thud when some more romantic bungling occurred and any trace of charm was extinguished. I can confidently say that the art design is the only thing going for Glass Lip. You could justifiably watch the show on mute and just watch the backgrounds for two hours. Seriously. Simply put, I care for nothing in Glass Lip bar the visuals. I don't care about the future powers. I don't care that Yuki and Yanagi have an on-off relationship but neither can get the balls to properly initiate it. I don't care that Hiro and Sachi have a budding romance between them. Okay, maybe I care a little. Only a little. I especially don't care for a story which has such unappealing main characters. Toko and Kakiru are so Boring! I know nothing about them outside of the things which are presented to us. Kakiru just moved into town and has a mother that travels around, and Toko's family are glassblowers. That's the extent of my knowledge. How am I supposed to work with that? Kakiru especially is unlikable because he seems to cause trouble by either saying nothing or being slightly petulant. He claims that since he sees the future and knows what will happen, he just lets things happen. What will be, will be. How defeatist. In short, I don't care. And neither should you. This anime will go down in infamy, I swear it will, for having one of the worst plots in recent memory. Oh wait, it can't because it hasn't got a plot! Oh well, next! Glass Lip is available to stream on Crunchyroll. My rating, cancel! If you value your sanity, steer clear of this mess of a plot. Only look at stills, that's all you need to see. If you like what you heard, please visit my Patreon campaign to help grow Anathile at patreon.com forward slash masakox or follow me on Twitter at masakox or at anaphile.